In this video tutorial we're going to look at uh, battens or purlons and uh, fascia gutter and trim. Before you can apply fascia and gutter and trim to a roof you first have to define it and that was dealt with in an earlier video. The usual process uh, before we apply materials to a roof and uh, this was also covered in the checking tutorial um, is to verify the line categories. Now, this is an essential step uh, before applying uh, trim to a roof. If um, the line category is incorrect, well then the trim applied to that will be incorrect. So it's essential to make sure you have the right line types associated with each of the lines and, uh, and then you will be pretty confident of getting the right trim applied to each of those lines. So this check is a critical stage of the process. If you're satisfied with all the line categories you can turn those off and then we go to cover flashings. Now uh, the, the flashings dialog box is where you also provide the information necessary to apply purlins or battens to a roof. Uh, you first of all select the appropriate material that you want to apply to this roof. In this case let's have this 50mm T-hat batten and uh, we then select insert modify. So the batten spacing dialog box comes up which provides for you to apply different uh, spacings uh, for purlins on a roof, um, typically spaced from the eave uh, with up to three uh, incremental spacings from the eave and then spacings with respect to each other so you can have them evenly spaced or fixed spaced. Evenly spaced will do up to the specified number. Um, caution when applying uh, purlins to, to a ridge because there are two opportunities to do that depending on what market you're in uh, the right method will be used. Uh, you can have three spacings from the ridge working down or you can simply apply them to ridges uh, and this provides in effect it applies the uh, nailing strip at the ridge line. Notice also you can apply purlins on hips and valleys as well uh, in, in in the same way it's applying a, uh, a nailing strip at the perimeter. So once you've selected uh, the materials that you wish to apply uh, you simply hit apply all and those rules are employed to create the layout for all your purlins. The uh, appearance of the purlin lines is a function of the settings. In my case I've set them to be a fine dashed line. Okay, once the purlins are applied to the roof, the uh, next thing we do is select the various materials to go on the, um, the, the line categories. And, uh, and this is from the list, and as I've said before, these must be predefined already. So if we were to, for example, select a certain ridge cap, uh, only ridges are defined, and those ridges are displayed ready for your use. Uh, typically uh, the hip will be the same as the ridge but that's not always the case depending on where you are and what type of cap it is uh, but in my case the uh, hip will be the same as ridge. The trim category is determined by the line types on the roof and the software uh, automatically populates this list based on the categories that you've specified. So the software knows I've got a couple of box gutters which I've applied around this dormer entranceway uh, feature and, uh, and the sidewall flashing associated with that has been automatically picked up by the software and added to my list. Uh, the default settings for all my trim are set uh, based on a, a particular category and uh, in my case I'm just working with the default. You can set up different trim systems for different roofing systems and if you were to save it away as a system you simply click on save as and create a different system for, so, um, for whatever the material is. So this might be for example a, uh, a color bond corrugated system. And, uh, and what that means is that next time I come in here, I can simply go in here and say load the uh, color bond uh, corrugated flashing system and that list will be automatically applied and I don't have to select them all individually, they're already defined ready for me. Now the key thing with the, uh, getting the correct cutting list for flashings is to check the allowances and you can have as many different allowance files as you like. 
So the allowance file determines the basis on which the material is calculated and it's very much determined by how it's defined, that is to say uh, it's defined based on how it's supplied. Um, we have run allowance. Now the run allowance takes one run and adds an extra amount to it. So if, um, for example, this ridge line, I would rather be 300 millimetres too long, or a foot, uh, too long uh, than two inches or, or, or 50 mil too short. So a little bit longer is better than being any length too short, so fundamentally that's what run allowance takes account of. The lap allowance takes account of any joins. Um, in some markets the trim is supplied in multiples of 10 feet um, or 3 metres. In other markets they, they're cut to length up to a certain length that you can ship on your truck. And so uh, wherever there's a join there will be a lap allowance. And that's added to the total length when the cutting list is calculated. In addition to those allowances we have fascia and gutter internal corner and external corner corner allowances and that's to provide additional material at the corners for fascia and gutter so the installers have sufficient material to fabricate their corners. So check those, um, they're important, um, normally you would have them predefined, um, in my case I'm having a default set, uh, you can save a set away for different roof systems depending on the method of installation. So once we've checked our allowances and we're happy with those numbers we hit OK and then we hit generate. So the software instantly creates the complete cut list for the entire job and picks up all the accessory items required to finish that job off. The cutting list is uh, determined by the way you've defined your materials. So in the case of my fascia and gutter, for example, I have cut to length fascia and gutter. So if you were doing um, roll forming on site to whatever length is required or having them fabricated in the factory to cut length, um, then that would be the way you would specify. Uh, it, you'll notice here that all my purlins or battens are supplied in fixed lengths of 8 metres. Uh, that's how they were supplied to me, so I order them in just multiples of 8 metres. So um, this uh, cut list is a result of what you define. So go back and double check the uh, definitions to ensure that you get the, re the desired result. If you don't get the desired result, it will always be because you've incorrectly defined them or you've selected the wrong item. So that's the uh, generating the cutting list for your fascia and gutter and also for our purlins. And uh, at any stage uh, now, this is ready to be, uh, to be quantified with the roof sheets or whatever else is going on this roof and the uh, formal proposal prepared for my customer. So that's about it for fascia and gutter. Oh, by the way, notice that if the uh, trim is cut to length, the uh, drawing is annotated with that length so that you know what length goes on what, um, what edge of the roof. And in this particular instance, you will notice there's a difference in length between fascia and gutter. Well, that's uh, because the uh, allowances are different. Because my maximum length to ship is... Uh, uh, is 8 metres. Uh, these ones are all less than 8 metres, so that works. If I zoom out and come over here, you'll see that uh, I need two lengths up to my maximum length, and, uh, and that's what it's displayed. So um, the drawing that we, is the, the flashing layout drawing, that is, uh, will be prepared based on these numbers, and a fully annotated installation drawing will be created as one of the reports that we create. So that's it on flashings, uh, enjoy and uh, we look forward to seeing you in another tutorial shortly.